imagine when you hear the word projector? When I grew up in the 90s, I imagined personal projectors like this thing, a big clunky machine that sprayed a movie on the wall that was kind of faded and definitely not as good as a TV. And since I've never actually owned a projector, I've always had this idea in my head that they were all sort of inferior to the TV, visually and in sound quality. However, today may actually change my mind about projectors because today, we are gonna be reviewing the Arzen, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, with 3D Dolby audio and AI focusing capabilities. I'm not even really sure what that means yet. So the big question is, is this projector really bigger and badder and better than my flat screen TV? And is it better than all of the projectors that I grew up looking at? Well, let's find out. So right when you open the box, the first thing you're hit with is of course the user manual, the two plus one year warranty. You've got the remote, which has a dedicated Netflix, YouTube, and Prime Video button. I wish it had a Discovery Plus button, honestly, but you can't have it all. I gotta watch my 90 day. Going back to Panama, I don't wanna see you ever again. Okay, go. Then you've got your HDMI cord, you've got your power cord. And the last thing you've got is of course the projector itself. Ooh, it looks super nice. You've got a really good speaker material on the outside. You've got, of course, the lens. This is where you're gonna actually be projecting out of. I'm guessing this is where it picks up the controller signals as well as possibly it does its AI business. I don't know, we'll see later. Then on top, you've got what looks like a little bit of a volume button. Now let's flip this around to the part that I'm most excited about because I love that this has so many ports on the back. So you've got USB 1, USB 2, HDMI 1, HDMI 2. If you wanna plug in headphones manually, here's where the power of cord goes. Here's how you turn it on. And something that I'm really excited about is, as you saw, all those Netflix apps and YouTubes and all that stuff Hello, is all built in. So you don't have to hook up like an Apple TV or Fire Stick or any of that to it because it has all the apps already built in to check out, which of course we will check out when we test this thing. Last but not least, if you flip this thing over, you've got this threaded area right here, which is obviously to screw it onto a stand. I might actually do that for this test. Also underneath, you've got this little screw thing that you can screw up and down to adjust the height and the angle of your projector and speakers. Speaking of the speakers, <laughs> This is a really cool thing. And this isn't just a weird break in the seam. This is actually where you can open this up and check out your speakers. Look at that. So if you'd like, you can take that off or you can leave it on. And it just snaps right back on, it's magnetic. Huh? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything that the Arzen comes with. Okay, so I'm stupid. I just realized that I am going to need a white wall to project this on. And all of the walls in the rental house that I'm in right now are like a light blue. Bruh. So just give me like two to three days, hold on. Okay, I'm back and I've got my 60 inch Kodak projector that I got off Amazon, which by the way, I'll leave a link to down in the description below if you wanna pick yourself up one. But let's go build this thing and let's set up the Orison projector itself. Thanks for helping me out with this, bud. Okay, so I just found some batteries for the remote because it doesn't come with any, and we are gonna test it out and turn this baby on. Oh! Okay, it is auto-focusing right now. I'm not touching anything. It's really cool because every time that I move the projector, it auto-focuses on the screen itself, and I don't gotta do anything, which I don't think old projectors had. <laughs> Okay, so I ended up not using the pole because I didn't really like the way that it kind of shook. It's the poles issue, not the projectors. So I ended up putting it up on my shelf, if you can see that right up there. And that seems to be working perfectly. But now that everything's aligned, I wanna quickly go through what the user guide that comes with this projector says about the distances between how far you should put your projector away from your screen and what this projector can actually do. Essentially, the bigger you want your screen, the further away you're gonna have to move your projector. So you can see in the booklet that comes with the Orzen that if you want a 60 inch like I have currently, you wanna move about 5.88 feet. I have mine about six feet, but it works all the same. And then 80 inch at 7.84 and so on, all the way up to 250 inches without losing quality, which is a pretty big screen. And I'm gonna have to test that out in the future when I have a bigger space. 
That's quite big. Now that you know the distances between the screen and the projector and kind of how all that works, man, let's get into testing this bad boy. All right, so for this test, I'm gonna be testing out in a bunch of different ways with different lighting conditions and also with different devices. This includes the built-in apps that it already has, as well as I'm gonna be hooking up a PlayStation to it to see how it games. And then I may even hook up some other electronics that I have in here that I think might work on it. So let's dive into the built-in apps first. We're gonna start with a movie and we're gonna do it in ideal conditions. Meaning for a projector, ideal conditions is when it's really dark. And I'm trying to think of the darkest movie that I can think of, and that's probably one of the Batman films. However, when I opened the Netflix app, another somewhat dark looking movie popped up that just so happens to be one of my favorite movies from the past few years, which is Dune. The movie looked pretty good through the projector, but I decided to dive into the settings and see what settings I could adjust. As I flipped through the different choices, cinema mode looked the best, and what happened next was one of the best feelings, honestly, that I've gotten in a while while reviewing a product. As I was suddenly thrust into an atmosphere that genuinely made me feel like I was inside of a movie theater, but without all the people talking around me, of course, it was amazing. A little bit more into the movie, I started to check out the sound settings because I wanted to see what would sound best with the movie. And of course, the best sounding one for a movie was the movie mode. After Dune, I decided to test out a brighter movie, like Super Mario Brothers, which, like Dune, showed clear and true colors from the movie. So is the Orzen projector worth it so far? I take that as a yes. Once I got done testing the movies for overall quality with different picture and sound modes, I decided to do an atmospheric lighting test. First, I opened my window, which is directly behind where I'm sitting facing the screen. And I noticed very little difference in quality, so that's pretty awesome. However, then I turned on my desk's LED light, which is coming from the same direction as the window. And this washed out the screen a bit. Note to self, watch out for too much artificial lighting around the projector screen. So before connecting and testing out some other devices with this projector, I decided to just explore outside of the main apps and discover that there are a ton of other accessible apps in this thing. They've got Plex, which I use a lot, and they even have TikTok if you want to doom scroll on a bigger screen. They even have what looks like a browser where you can access ChatGPT and any other website your heart desires. This NetRange app store was extremely impressive, and honestly, I can't wait to dive deeper into it later. All right, so now that we've tried out the apps that are already built into the projector and we tested the sound out, we tested out different screen modes and we tested with different lighting sources in the room, let's try to connect something to it to see how well it does. And first up, I'm gonna connect my PS5. You know what always cheers me up? Video games. <laughs> I started up my PS5 and changed the picture settings to gaming, which already made it look way better and began playing one of my favorite games ever made, Hogwarts Legacy. Which side note, I'll be digging really deep into this game and Harry Potter in general in a video coming out in a couple weeks, which I am super pumped on. But anyway, the game looked great on screen and hooking up my PS5 was super easy and was instantly recognized by the projector as coming from the HDMI one source without me even having to do anything, which was great. Now, lastly, some people might want to use the projector as a secondary monitor or their main monitor. And sometimes when you try to do this with a TV, it kind of sucks. So I want to see what this projector looks like when I hook up my MacBook. And luckily, I've got here an HDMI to USB-C so we can do it. Let's see what it looks like. Once my MacBook Pro is connected, I messed around with the picture settings to get an image mode that I liked. Although it wasn't as good as my dedicated external monitor that sits on my desk, it did do the job pretty good and came through pretty clear. This includes video I played all the way down to the small text that was on the screen. Okay, now that we've tested this projector out in a bunch of different ways, let's talk about the pros and the cons that I found while using it in the final Orzen review. Let's start out with the pros, which number one is that it's so easy to set up. You just plug everything in. You can automatically see the light on the top turn on. Then you just press the power button here on the remote or on the back of the actual machine. Number two, great picture and sound. This was the thing that I was most scared of with reviewing a projector, but the sound overall is amazing and the picture is really, really good. Now, as you can see with the test, the darker the room, the better picture you're gonna get, but it really does come out looking like 4K, so super impressed. Pro number three and something that I had no idea it even 
had was a gigantic app store. There are so many apps, apps I've never even heard of, plus all the ones that I have like YouTube, Plex, it's got Netflix, it's got all of the different apps that I would ever need. The last pro that I kind of mentioned at the very beginning of this, it has a great port selection on the back. There's so many ports that you can plug two different HDMIs in, two different USBs, all sorts of stuff, and really you could get an adapter for that to expand that. You could hook up a million things to it, although you wouldn't want it to overheat, which leads me into the few cons that I do have for this projector. Now, number one con, since I'm kind of comparing this to a TV, it does run a little bit hot. I think that was also my fault because I put it inside of an Ikea cube. But something that I did notice about an hour in was that the fans really kicked on and they were cooling the entire device down a lot more than what it felt like it was like when I first started using it. So it felt a little hot, but then it kind of cooled down. So I'm gonna continue testing it, but I had to mention it. I don't think that that's a major con because obviously it did cool itself down, but something to keep an eye on. And number two, it's really just a con compared to TVs. It's not a con for projectors, but again, I wanna mention it, is the whole lighting thing. If it is darker, it is gonna be a way better picture. If you put a lot of light in, it's gonna be not that great of a picture. I noticed that when I opened my window up over here that it didn't really make a big difference. Like natural light didn't mess with it. But when I turned on this LED light up here, that really messed with it and it kind of washed the screen out. So if you're gonna use this one, don't use it around a lot of LED lights. Just turn your lights off and you're gonna get a really good movie experience or whatever you're using the projector for. Now, last thing I wanna mention in the con section, which again, it's not really a con, but it's just something to be aware of, which is that anytime that you move that projector just a little bit, it's gonna autofocus on its own. That's the AI part, which is fantastic, but you're still gonna have to straighten it up or re-straighten it. So wherever you place it, just plan on keeping it there just so you don't have to deal with the annoyance that I did because I kept moving it around. So. I guess that's kind of user error, I don't know. But overall, my review on this thing is that it is amazing and I highly recommend it. I will leave the link down in the description below if you want to pick up your own Orzen projector AI focusing craziness. I want to give a huge shout out to Orzen, of course, for sending me this to try out. I tried to be as truthful as I could around this projector, but it really was a good device. So it made it pretty easy for me not to talk crap on it. <laughs> as I said earlier in the video as well, I'm going to leave a link to the Kodak projector screen if you want to pick that up as well. And if I showed you guys any value, please hit that subscribe button. As always, if you'd like to pick up my AI book that I wrote, you can totally check it out. It's The Very Strange Universe of Dr. Natalia Zeal, and a link is down in the description below. And with that, I'm going to leave last week's video right up here if you want to go and check it out. I'll see you guys next time. I'm Eric J. Coons. Peace out.